Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about vignettes. Now, I know that vignettes can be kind of uh, kitsch, and uh, some people like them, some people hate them, uh, and I think if they're done well, you won't even know that they're there. So this is not only how to make a vignette, but how to make a vignette well, um, so that the viewer doesn't even necessarily know there's a vignette there, but they know that their attention is going to the center or the focal point, not necessarily the center, but the focal point of where you want them to go. There's a right way to do a vignette, there's a wrong way to do a vignette, and then there's a many different ways that you can create a vignette. So I'm gonna go over all of that right now. The first way is right here in Camera Raw. You open up your raw image, your TIFF, your JPEG, whatever, right here into Camera Raw. You can go to the Effects tab, and you can start creating a vignette based on the post crop vignette. There's different styles of the vignette that you can that you can use, and we'll go over those in a second. But let's go over these sliders first. The amount of the vignette, if you move it to the right, you're gonna get a white vignette. If you move it to the left, you're gonna get a black vignette. I prefer black vignettes, but you are free to do whatever you'd like to do with your photograph because it's yours. Now, I don't like the amount all the way up. I like the amount set at something like 40, or maybe even uh, 30 something in that range between 30 and 40 because it's not you can press the P key and see your preview um, it's not overly powerful um, it doesn't distract the viewer and the viewer might not even know it even existed unless you told them hey there's a vignette on this one then they might realize it then but there's some more controls here you can control let's go ahead and put this the mount all the way up so you can see this and I'll show you a trick in a second here the midpoint is where the vignette starts from the center and works its way out. Um, I like to keep that pretty much uh, in the middle. There's the roundness. You can choose more of a square vignette or more of a circular vignette. It's all up to you. And then there's the feathering. The feathering is how hard edged the vignette is. Now, certain types of vignettes that you should not do are vignettes like this that have uh, singled out our lion here, this poor guy, and it is a guy, it's not a girl, it's a it's a male. They gave him some hormones so that he doesn't have his manhoodly mane, and I would think it would be horrible if I was at a zoo and someone took away my hormones and my manliness, supplemented them with hormones, I guess I should say. But you don't want to look like you're putting this lion in the crosshairs. I don't really support big game hunting, so this isn't a good idea don't do this type of vignette. It's not a very pleasing vignette. Um, now, a cool trick I want to show you. So, we can put the amount to our desired amount, like 30. And how do we know what's happening with all these settings below? It's kind of hard to see them. But if you press the Alt or Option key, it's basically, for that instance, going to give you what it would look like at 100%, like we saw above. So, when I press Alt or Option, it shows me exactly what's happening with that adjustment set to 100%. The minute I unclick the mouse, it brings it back to the setting of the amount that we have selected at negative 30. We can do the same thing with the feathering. Press Alt and it shows you that stark feathering that it's doing. As soon as we release the mouse or release the Alt key, it's going to revert back to that amount that we have at the top there. Pretty cool. So at this point you can press P for preview or you can click the little box up here. Um, on and off to see how your vignette is working. You can also create a new preset. And in this preset, you can save just the vignette by unchecking all of these boxes except for lens vignetting. And when you click on that in your presets, you automatically have that vignette. All right, what I'm gonna do is go into the effects and take the vignette off. And I'm going to open up the image because I want to show you other ways that you can create vignettes too. Now in Photoshop CS5, CS6, oops, I didn't open it, did I? Let me uh, go ahead and open that up. All right, open image. Now, <clears throat> there are other vignettes that you can do as well. Let me go ahead and make this bigger. We can go up to filter and go to lens vignette. Before you make any vignettes, I suggest that you create a new layer of the background that you're working on. And you can do that by pressing Command or Control J. Command on a Mac, 
control on a PC and then you can go to filter and go to lens correction. In the lens correction you can go to the custom tab and you don't have quite as many uh, adjustments here as you do in camera raw but you still have it options. You, know, you can make a slight vignette here as well. So that's another way you can make a vignette. I prefer to make my own vignettes with brushes and masks. This is a little bit more advanced. It's not just sliding sliders back and forth. You kind of have to know a little bit about Photoshop, but it's not that big of a deal. It's something that you can learn really quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer that is an adjustment layer of a solid color of black. Now, with this solid color of black, I can drop the opacity down or opacity down, however you like to say it. And then I can go to the, the mask itself, make sure my brush is set to black. Press the B key, set it to black. You can press the D key to default your brushes to black and white, and then X to switch back and forth between black and white. Great for masking. And then I can press the right bracket key to make my brush size larger. I believe in Photoshop CSS you can go above uh, 2500 on your brush. So 100 brush right here. And I can just click with black on the mask. I'm starting to make my own little vignette, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's one way you can make a mask, a vignette, I should say, not a mask. Um, one of my other favorite ways to make a vignette is to create a new layer mask on that same black color overlay that we did and make like a one inch by one inch border all the way around this and we're gonna go ahead and fill this with black now I don't really care for that vignette too much, but in the mask options, in the properties up here, you can go to feather and you can move the feather over and move it really far over and you start to, to fade away those edges. At this point, nobody probably would even know that you have a vignette on here. I mean, they'd have to really be looking for it. But what I don't like about this vignette is how it's really pushed back my subject matter. Um, this little guy in the foreground, maybe I want his legs to come in. So what I can do is on that mask, select my and paint with black in that area to start bringing back just that one guy in the middle. So that makes him kind of pull out a little bit more than the rest of them. Pretty cool. Now, at this point, you're not limited to just a black or white vignette. Um, you can do uh, a colored vignette by adding a solid color here we can make this vignette a little bit warmer by making it, let's say, like an like a burnt umber orange or something. Now, I know what you're saying. We've just filled this with all orange. If you press and hold Alt or Option on a Mac and you see that little square in between the layers, you click right in between these layers, it's going to do it what they call a clipping mask so that the layer above the layer below it only fills in the section of what's going on below it. So at this point, it's only filling in what's happening on the layer below it with the mask. And you can reduce the opacity on that to give yourself like a, a warmer type of vignette. So that's the skinny on vignettes. Not that difficult. Uh, you can get really creative with them and make them really powerful and effective. Or you can make bad vignettes where it looks like you're going big game hunting. I suggest you do the former of the two. Again, this is EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis. Uh, if you like what you've seen here, please subscribe because I try to do a new video tutorial every Friday. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Play with some vignettes. Don't do bad vignettes. And if you see a friend doing bad vignettes, uh, ha have them seek professional help. Have a great weekend. Take care.